We have uh, we have a guest on next hour. I was started doing some research on something. The Mountain of Moses, um, Mount Sinai. Everybody thinks, oh well, we don't know where it is. Mm, not so. Uh, some uh, new discovery has been made or released information, uh, and our guest has been there, and it is phenomenal. If you think the Moses story didn't happen. Mm, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Something has been kept under wraps by the Saudi government forever. Next. So a friend of the program called, um, I don't know, about two months ago and said, uh, Glenn, I have some information to share with your audience and, and I'd like your audience help on something. And okay. Send me information you have. So I started looking at it, and I thought, this is ridiculous. There's no way this exists. If this exists, how come I don't know about it? Started doing my homework on it. It does exist. In fact, what it is is so important to mankind. It is it's game-changing. What we're going to talk about in the, in the next half an hour or so is truly game changing for mankind and for you personally and you will do what I did there's no way this is true and you will start doing your homework and realize it is but it has never truly been seen and documented the way it should be because of political reasons Stand by for a fascinating conversation that just might end up changing the way you view everything. So Ryan uh, Morrow is a is the director of the Clarion Intelligence Network, um, and he reached out about a project he is doing on the mountain of Moses, Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia. And Ryan, I have to tell you, I heard this and I thought that can't be. And then I started doing my homework on what limited information is out there. And it is stunning what is in Saudi Arabia. Welcome to the program. Thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited to be able to talk about this and, and really see this start to impact the world. Because like you said, just so, so few people know about this. And of those that have heard about it, uh, they rightfully so assume it's crazy. But there are there is video evidence of this. Um, there's only been a few people that have seen it, very little evidence, and it's because it is pretty much on lockdown uh, with the Saudi government. I mean, literally, it's like a military installation base. Right. So uh, basically, the problem that uh, many people have grappled with is that at the traditional site for Mount Sinai in Egypt's Sinai Peninsula, uh, there's been very little evidence. And so that's led to an academic consensus uh, that the story is just made up, or at least 99% of it is exaggerated. Um, I remember when I was a, a young teenager, and I flipped through the Bible that I had and had notes on the side. One of the notes said that there, had, there was no evidence of the Exodus. I mean, that was in a Bible I had. Um, and it really just turns out, in, in, based on our research, uh, that they we've all just been looking in the wrong spot. Um, it, the Bible's very clear that Moses fled to Midian, which would be northwestern Saudi Arabia. Uh, the historian Josephus uh, said that Mount Sinai was the highest mountain located near a city that is today called Al-Bad in Saudi Arabia. And when you go to this location and you discard that conventional, traditional thinking, and you follow the story of the Exodus very literally, because it, it has directions in it, of them going north, south, left, right, and if you follow it very literally, you run into just about everything that that story talks about, uh, but it, if the information has not gotten out because Saudi Arabia is a theocracy, it's very isolated, and then in regards to Mount Sinai itself, within Saudi Arabia and some of these other sites that we'll talk about, uh, they are kept secret with fences, and they are patrolled by police. And so those who have uh, tried to go there um, have been arrested. They've had their evidence confiscated. Uh, one guy, a highly controversial individual, Ron Wyatt, um, who went there in the late 1970s, he was held for 70 days. And then the next two guys who snuck in, Bob Cornuke and Larry Williams, 
They were then arrested as well and had their stuff confiscated. And then an American couple uh, that were working in the country, Jim and Penny Caldwell, started leaking out photos and videos from the area around Mount Sinai but remained anonymous. Um, But that was a while ago, and so there wasn't any modern-day footage or video, and so people forgot about the theory uh, until now. Okay. And so we've released this video that's about 25 minutes long um, online just this second. Okay, so Ryan, um, tell me what you have found and how you got the video first. How did you get the video? Uh, well, I did go into Saudi Arabia three times. Um, we it, Really just a miracle happened where uh, I was very interested in this since a young age, and then it just fell into my lap. Um, And amazingly, uh, even with some things going wrong, we did have some encounters with Saudi police. Um, I was able to get in and out of the country safely three times, um, and we got stunning footage that's really never been seen before. And so now the entire world can see evidence of, for example, the golden calf worship, uh, the altar that Moses constructed at the foot of the mountain, just as the book of Exodus says. And it is Um, what's stunning about this is it is it is marked it, it is marked with with a golden calf, um, ancient markings, uh, and you know cows were not in Saudi Arabia, so there was no reason, no 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 tribe later would do that because there weren't cows, and so it's marked with cows, it's marked with a golden calf, it's clearly an altar, and what's stunning about some of some of these things is that they are behind this very high security fence that is marked enti- around this entire mountain which the the Bedouins and the and the locals call the mountain of Moses correct right that's what's really amazing is that you get to northwestern saudi arabia and the first thing that saudis will tell you after saying hello because they're so happy to see an american uh, they've never met face to face and they say did you know, do you know what's here? It's the mountain of Moses, Jebel Musa. Do you want me to show you? And I'll also show you the other areas where Moses and the Yahud, the Jews, walked. And so when you go there, th- this is common knowledge over there, um, which is really amazing. And many Saudis are also aware that we don't know about it. I spoke to a former jihadist contact of mine um, about this. Um, and I was just telling what I was doing in Saudi Arabia, and he goes, yeah, Mount Sinai, Saudi Arabia, and it's covered up with the fences and the police. Yeah, we, we all knew about that when I was in the jihadist world. And from his perspective, uh, the reason for doing that wasn't just because of the geopolitical ramifications, but from his interpretation of strict Sharia law and those he hung out with, which included associates of Osama bin Laden, uh, the reason it's done is to preserve the sites, uh, mm-hmm. because if people start going and they start like taking sand and they, and they sell it, saying it'll do a miracle, it becomes idolatrous. And if it becomes idolatrous, according to Sharia law, you have to deny access and destroy everything. And they don't want to do that. So from his perspective, uh, Sharia law basically saved the sites. And when you go there, I've got to tell you, you feel like you're in the exodus. It's just incredible. Okay. Um, when When we come back, I want you to describe some of the things that you saw and have captured um, on video and then what you are asking for help with um this is when you see the video um i I can't tell you there's there is no place on earth that i would rather go to no place on earth than this uh if i could go anywhere to actually stand in front of the things that i've seen just on ryan's video I would pay any price. Uh, This is truly, truly game changing uh, when it comes to faith. Um, Take me through your trip. What did you see? Sure. Well, uh, the first thing that we saw is where the likely Red Sea crossing happened. And when you look at uh, maps of that area, of the underwater area, what you'll see is that there's actually a path going from Egypt into Saudi Arabia. So if the waters parted, you would have to have somewhere that you can walk that wasn't too steep. And that's there and only right there. And what's crazy and, about this is it's it's kind of elevated a bit. Um, and so the Jews, when if you ever study Torah with Jewish people, 
they interpret the water's parting differently. It is that the water was swept up. So it was the wind that was blowing. The water was swept up and kind of piled up on top of each other. Um, and so it's not a it's not like you see in the Ten Commandments with two, uh, you know, two walls of water. Right. It's just swept up and that reveals the dry land. Well, that's a lot of water to sweep up unless there is this underwater bridge and it's there. And it's from one side of the water to the other. If the water was swept up, it is a perfect path to Saudi Arabia. It's crazy. I know. And, and the army of the Egyptians would drown if the waters came back because it's wide enough for a population to walk. But if you're pushed over to the sides, it becomes real deep. And so you, the waters coming down would kill the people and also would drown them. Um, and so it makes logistical sense at that point. Um, and then after that, we know from the book of Exodus that uh, they go uh, to Mara, but then they also go to a specific spot called Elam, uh, where they come across 12 wells and 70 palms. You follow the directions in the book of Exodus. You come to this area. It's an oasis that has many more palms than that because they multiply over time. But to this day, 12 wells. And when you go there, there will be Saudi saying, this is Elam. This is where Moses and the Yehud, the Jews, came. Then you leave there and you follow the exact directions of the Bible. And what do you find? Uh, what's visually the most amazing point um, is basically called the split rock. Uh, with the miracle where Moses comes up to a rock because the people are ready to revolt against them because they're ready to die of thirst. And, and God tells them to go up to a rock and strike it with his rod. And then there's an earthquake and a little bit of a rumble, and then water pours forth, and it relieves the Israelites. And that rock appears to still be there. Uh, when you go to this area, you will see a massive split rock with it signs is, of water erosion coming down from it onto the ground where a lake formed. Okay, so you, so, you, so you understand this is crazy. It's not a mountain. It's just this giant rock on this, like, pile of rocks and this huge rock, um, and it's split from top to bottom. It's in the desert. But as Ryan just said, right at where the rock is split, there's water erosion. So there is... It's clear that the rocks on the ground that, that, you know, are in front of this rock, a mighty water ran from that point down into the valley for a very long time. Because you can see, you know, how many, how, how long does it take to water erode rocks? It, it, yeah. it's, it's actually smooth where the water flowed. It's crazy. And nearby, there are inscriptions uh, that appear to be Proto-Hebrew, including images of a foot in a sandal with Proto-Hebrew writing. That means the sole of your foot. Now, the reason that makes sense is because of the biblical verse where uh, God told the Israelites, uh, wherever your foot, the sole of your foot touches, I'm going to, that's going to be your land. Um, and so there are these Proto-Hebrew inscriptions of basically the Israelite tribal sign right in this area. And the local Saudis, um, at least those that will talk to you rather than kick you out of the Split Rock area, they refer to this area either as the Water of Moses or the Split Rock of Moses. Mm. Okay, so then you move on. And what do you come to? That's where you get to uh, what the locals call the Mountain of Moses, Jebel Musa. And the top of it, in a real visually reminiscent um, feature uh, of God descending on, upon it like a fire, the top of it is black. Now, there's some people that say that that's just a natural thing. It's not evidence of, of supernatural phenomena. But I've got to tell you, visually, it's very distinct. And just on that level alone, you look at it, and it's just breathtaking. Okay, so now I, I, saw some, uh, I saw some video, and I didn't notice that black anywhere else on any other mountaintop or mountainside or anything else did you i did yes you um, could see that black I elsewhere could. yep okay just in that immediate area i could but i mean who knows how big it, if that phenomenon happens and there is to be evidence at the top of the mountain of that who knows how big that was i mean maybe it's it would have been more than just that peak we don't really know okay 
Um, so it's hard to tell. But then in front of this mountain, uh, just like, and you can just imagine Moses coming down from the mountain and seeing the people worshiping the golden calf based on where it is visually, that's where you have uh, a, a site of golden calf worship, or at least bull worship. And, and the local custom is that that's where that story took place. And you can see these petroglyphs of people worshiping cows on this stand where the golden calf would have been at the top, and there's a circular area on the top that maybe, you know, speculatively, could have been where the golden calf was smashed into powder because you can see it was worn down at the top, and then there's an altar in front of it. Again, just like the Bible says. Okay, give me the, give, give the audience a scope of how large this is because it's enormous. Yeah, I don't have the measurements in front of me, but you climb it, basically. You can climb it, um, and you get to the top of it, and if the golden calf was on the top, then the local population of Israelites that turned against Moses uh, would have seen it. And so it makes sense. But also, that was a brief episode in, in the book of Exodus. So you w- if it was too large, and there were too many petroglyphs, it actually wouldn't match the story. So what you see is a limited amount of intense human activity uh, that uh, apparently just was limited to that one spot and then suddenly stopped. From there, you, if you walk towards the foot of the mountain, you see a, an altar of uncut stone. You can see where the animals would have brought, been brought up through animal shoots and about 12 marble pillars. Now, why is that important? According to the book of Exodus, Moses builds an altar of uncut stone with no steps at the foot of Mount Sinai and erects 12 pillars to represent the tribes of Israel. And that's right there at the foot of the mountain. It is astonishing, um, and it has been preserved by the Saudis and protected by the Saudis. When you see the, the lengths, they have surrounded this entire gigantic mountain with security fence it is literally like a military operation um and you can't go anywhere and it says because of archaeological reasons but it's in english and arabic uh and you're not allowed it's not been really seen before so um can i hold you over for one more uh break here right sure um we want to work on a, a project with uh with ryan um and he wants to bring this evidence out and you can see everything that we're talking about he's just released a website we're going to give you that website when we come back you'll be able to see some of this stuff and roll up your sleeves and help us get to work on spreading the word on this when we come back There is a, um, you know, there's a, the, a popular way to dismiss the Bible is to say there's no evidence. There's no evidence. Well, there's all kinds of evidence. But on one of the biggest stories of the Bible, Moses and the Exodus and Mount Sinai, there is no evidence. However, we have found now that there is evidence and it is being protected by the Saudis. And you're not allowed to see it you're not allowed to go there it's protected by a fence the locals call it mount sinai the mountain of moses it has all of the markings from the red sea if you just follow the directions in the bible to the mountain and you see all of the things that are said to be seen in the bible and it's not well i guess that could be no 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 it's clearly that So this is either an elaborate, ancient, I don't know, hoax or Disneyland uh, for, you know, travelers to come and say, hey, look, and this is the mountain of Moses right here, (laughs) right here. And Walt Disney is, you know, making audio animatronic uh, calves. (laughs) It's good for a tourism (laughs) board, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Uh, Or this, there's something to this. Ryan Morrow is uh, the director of the Clarion Intelligence Network. I want to give you the video that you can go and see this. It's Sinai in Arabia. S-I-N-A-I in Arabia. Sinai in Arabia dot com. Go there now and just look at the footage. It is stunning. 
stunning that you've never heard of this. Uh, Ryan, I, this is, it's interesting looking at this because I think what you've put together is a really interesting theory with a lot of evidence. And you kind of point this out a couple of times in, in, in the piece where you're saying, like, we don't have, we don't know for sure about all this stuff. This is, but it all fits. What is the level of acceptance when it comes to the church and, and, and religious uh, experts Scholars. and historians? Like, do they believe this is plausible? Do they believe this is, re- is reality? Or is this something you kind of just came up with on your own and you kind of s- want to see how they react? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I'm not even the first person to, to go to right. the mountain. And so the theory has been out for a few, a few decades. Um, but it, I think it is gaining more mainstream acceptance. There are some scholars who have said it's possible or likely. They obviously wouldn't want to commit 100%. Uh, you do come across uh, the problem of conventional thinking and uh, people with credentials being taught a certain way, and so they just stick to the traditional mm-hmm. site. But then those same people will almost always admit that there's no evidence at the traditional site. So I think the problem is, is that people just don't know everything that's there. Um, and of those that I talk to, once they understand what's there, they say, yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of got to be it. Um, uh, one thing I'd add is that this actually is separate from Clarion Project, where I work, just so, just so that I'm, uh, I keep my bosses happy. Um, so this was an independent project. Um, but speaking to the earlier point uh, about people not knowing about this, that's why I think this, even this radio segment right now could be a historical moment, because the ramifications of this are just massive on on a personal level and even geopolitically and so i encourage people to go to sinai in arabia.com um, and hopefully the blaze um social media accounts can also send out the direct link to the youtube video um that you can search uh called finding the mountain of moses that just went live and i hope people watch it uh on christmas with their families and with their churches um because uh, i think for a lot of people um especially including myself it really brought me to a whole new level of confidence in my faith, but also understanding of my faith, and that you can't put a price on. And you weren't somebody who is, who, you know, you say in the video that, you know, you're, you're not a man of perfect faith, and you, you struggle with it from time to time. True? Absolutely. I still have atheist days because I'm, I'm just that cynical by nature. <laughs> so what was it like for someone like you to stand there. I mean, I honestly, uh, Ryan, I've done all kinds of amazing things. I'd give my right arm to be able to go stand there. I, I still am stunned. Like, it's still not real to me that it happened because I think of when I was like 14 years old reading about this and, and becoming just so interested in it, but never thinking, oh, I'd ever actually go there. It was a dream, not a goal, because uh, a goal is something achievable. This wasn't achievable. And then just out of nowhere... I get this opportunity, and I go three times. I even, I even brought my mother, actually. Um, and when I stood there, I just felt really unworthy and also confused as to why I'd be granted this opportunity. Um, and, and so it's a, it's a weird feeling. And even beyond just seeing the evidence up close, the crazy amount of coincidences that were required to happen to get me there and to get me back safely, even when things went wrong, that's more stunning to me than even the evidence I saw right in front of my face. Ryan, I will tell you that I, when I first got this proposal in front of me, I thought, okay, um, you know, let me see it. Uh, when I saw, saw it and then I started doing my own homework on it, I feel compelled to make sure everyone in this audience sees this. I do believe this is game changing. I, I think this is one of those moments uh in history that um you know we, we here we are people who are struggling with our faith and this is kind of like the ma- a massive gift of okay well explain this you, you say there's no evidence you say there's this you say there's that okay fine explain this i've kept it from the world for this long and preserved it so tell me about this and in and i mean it is it, it, it's I mean, it just can't be it's it's a, you know, a 4000 year old hoax. If it's a hoax, uh, it, it is it's remarkable. And I think what adds so much credibility is the fences around it. <laughs> you yeah. know, the, the Saudis saying in Arabic and English, this is a an important archaeological site. 
no trespassing. And they mean it. They're, they're backing that up. And anybody who has goes to jail for a long time. And no pictures are allowed out. Right, which is also why uh, I view it as a, as a bit of a miracle that I did not end up in jail. Um, I saw the police. I inter- encountered them on a few occasions. Um, but there are just tremendous opportunities happening that haven't even been publicized yet. There are things that we have not released um, that we are working on, uh, things that have been found uh, that just need more research and, and we weren't ready to come forward with. Um, and so that's why uh, we are asking people to, if they feel compelled to do so, to donate at Sinai in Arabia.com so that we can do further research. Uh, but more importantly, the Saudis are constructing a super city. And in the middle of that super city is all of this stuff, including Mount Sinai. Um, and if that construction goes forth, we run the risk of evidence being destroyed, damaged, mm-hmm. or you can't excavate because no one's even brought a shovel to this place and started digging yet. And if you have buildings there, you obviously can't do that. So we want to engage the Saudis to get them to modify their plans and also partner with them and make them understand that it is in their economic interests to open this up, preserve it all, preserve the plain where the Israelites camped, uh, mm. you know, not just the mountain, and so preserve it, allow outside access, and don't do anything that could ruin it or destroy evidence. And that construction I saw going on when I was there. It's happening quickly. Okay. So if you want to be a part and you want to uh, help fund this project, go to SinaiInArabia.com. You will also find the video link there. You can also uh, look for the link on YouTube, and that is In Search of the Mountain of Moses. Is that right? It's Finding the Mountain of Moses, um, the real Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia. I'll be tweeting it out uh, as well. Okay, and we'll tweet that out, and we'll make sure that it's at the blaze and and everything else. Uh, Ryan, thank you for sharing this. Thank you for beginning a a profound journey, at least in my life, and I think a profound journey in many people's lives. Thank you so much, and glad you made it back. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Those words mean the world to me. So thank you so much, and we'll keep you posted. You got it. Isn't it interesting that uh, at a time where our faith is waning, um, that we would get uh, a gift like this of this evidence now of the real Mount Sinai? When you see the, I, I urge you to go to SinaiInArabia.com or finding the mountain of Moses on YouTube and, and see the evidence that is in Saudi Arabia and has been protected uh, behind, you know, razor wire for decades. People have taken pictures of it. People have taken video. Uh, A little of it has been uh, smuggled out in the past, but most people have had everything taken from them uh, and they have gone to jail uh, for taking pictures of all of this. Um, it's remarkable. And it's interesting to me that it is coming out now when people need faith more than ever or will soon. And here's something that can bolster your faith a great deal. I mean, this is mind boggling. If you look at this and you really research this out, you know, what else is it? What else could it be? And you know, maybe it's not, but um, and you don't necessarily have to believe in the supernatural to know that story is true. But uh, wow, it's stunning. It seems like, too, there was a lot of access. I mean, technology bridging these gaps where like they were able to take drones to places where maybe they couldn't actually get to. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. And it seems they've got a lot of sort of close up footage of places you wouldn't necessarily think they'd get access to. You know, it, it's interesting to the Saudi Arabian sort of connection here because they don't want a, a world in which, uh, you know, if let's just say Muslim extremists from their country were to come in and destroy destroy all. this site. Right. Like that's a huge hassle for them. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, that's not something they want to deal with. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the other side, you know, it, it almost seems like in, in a way they're protecting it. Right. Like they're they are. I, I mean, but the, they're also the keeping, is, keeping people away from it, which is correct. not. Not so positive. Correct. But I can kind of understand their motivations. There. Right. And he said also the Muslim extremist motivation is if it becomes a place of worship, then it has to be destroyed. So they want to preserve it uh, by not allowing people to see it, which is so screwed up thinking. But um, uh, what's new on 
Islamic extremists. Um, uh, so everybody has a a reason for preserving it. What's crazy is nobody's ever taken a a brush to this. Nobody's there's been no archaeological digs. This is the stuff on the surface, and it's phenomenal when you see the video. I mean, certainly, like the carvings and stuff in the rock are very visible, and and the split rock, split, yeah, and and the rock, and then the water. I don't know if his video shows it, uh, but the the but you can see in uh, in photographs the 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 smoothness of the rock as it came down one side. Again, it's in the middle of the desert. There shouldn't right. be water that's, coming out of a rock, right. a split rock right. there, right on the way to the mountain of Moses. It's crazy. It's just crazy. Again, uh, Sinai in Arabia dot com.